Second day at this JDK conference. I, I'm here with Arun. Hello, Arun. Hi. How was your talk? How are you feeling? I think the talk was really good, you know, given that I've slept only for two hours oh. and a nine o'clock talk, not bad. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, people are really enthu enthusiastic, sorry. Uh, we're seeing them, like, getting closer to you to keep asking you questions. So, yeah, we think it was well. I think that's always a good measure of, you know, how interaction is going in the talk. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, talking about it, uh, Arun, I have this, free, this first question. How a serverless app model um, can be used to deploy different uh, components of a microservice? Right, so the serverless application model essentially allows you to deploy, is basically an extension of cloud formation templates. And with that, you can define how your serverless Lambda function is going to be deployed. You can define where your S3 APIs are going to look like. Mm -hmm. You can define what events are going to trigger the Lambda function, whether it's S3 API or DynamoDB database, and of course, rest of your Dynamo, the Lambda functions and your cloud formation template information is in there. So the way I look at it is, you know, your S3 um, objects can be created using that. Your Lambda functions can be created using that. Your APIs can be created using that. So all of that together could very easily make it a microservice. So essentially, once you have uploaded your fat jar, Lambda function fat jar to S3, then you can just say, you know what, take this SAM, a serverless application model, and deploy it, and there goes your microservice right away. Okay. Let's talk about uh, Kubernetes right now. Um, do you think it's major enough to make changes in production? So, uh, you mean changes in production or use in production? Uh, well, I mean, using in production right. Kubernetes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, Kubernetes is a container orchestration framework, and we have definitely seen a lot of our customers using it. On AWS, we offer a variety of orchestration platforms. So, there is, of course, EC ECS, which is EC2 Container Service or Docker, but then a lot of customers use Kubernetes on AWS in production as well. Uh, one of the things that developers need to watch out is the pace with which the releases are being made. So that's there's something need to watch out is. But, I mean, there are 15 different ways, as a matter of fact, to deploy Kubernetes on AWS. So there's a lot of variety and choices that is available. Um, in terms of the production support, yes, there are a few offerings. But I think it's not just about taking Kubernetes into production. You really need to look at it, which vendors are offering commercial support around it. Yeah. Um, the number of features are still getting constantly added, so it's a difficult, little bit difficult for the developers to kind of keep pace with the releases. So there are a few caveats, but then the Kubernetes framework by itself is pretty solid in that sense. And last question, reading about your biography, I've seen you're really into, you're really keen into this uh, children learning to code. Uh, what's the deal with that? Yeah, well, um, this whole thing started with my son, you know, when he was 10 years of age, that dad, um, I want to learn coding. I said, okay, we'll teach you coding, and then I like to share things. So as part of teaching him, I realized, you know what, it would be useful if we can teach other kids as well. If my kid has a need, other kids have a need too. So um, I've been a long-time presenter at DevOx. So that's where we started the effort for DevOps for kids. Well, the Belgium guys started it. Mm -hmm. And I founded the nonprofit in the US, DevOps for Kids. And now we have several chapters across US where we do this technology workshops for kids. The main idea is to introduce them to technology in a fun way so that at least they're aware of what technology can do for them. And then we continue doing these workshops across different chapters. We also do events at different corporate events. So we have done, for example, Java One, yeah. we have done Red Hat Summit, we have done OSCON, and a bunch of other events, schools, libraries, wherever we get a chance, we do these technology workshops, mostly to get the kids excited. Yeah. We wish you lots of luck with that. Thank you for your time. Thank you, same here.